Tonight, a drunk driver accused of assaulting police after a destructive hit-run rampage. Also, a man rescued from a Theberton house fire charged with starting the blaze himself. Adelaide's market retailers plead with shoppers to buy locally in the wake of devastating storms. Fears of a hidden sting following the rise in popularity of alcohol-free drinks. And an Aussie bowling blitz has Pakistan on the back foot in the first test. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Elspeth Hussey. Good evening. A police officer has been attacked by a crazed drunk driver following a bizarre hit run in Adelaide's northeast. The woman had struck two parked cars before passing out. When police arrived, she turned on them and some of it was caught on camera. Two cars written off just nine days before Christmas. Just heard this really, really loud bang. The Graham family from Golden Grove and their neighbours raced outside. Police say a driver, more than four times the legal limit, ploughed into both vehicles but didn't stop. Drive up there. Which place? She's gone. She's going that way. They better not be driving anywhere. And she's come down, obviously end up on the wrong side of the road and just stove straight into two parked cars. The first one, which was our daughter's car, she only just finished paying it off a few months ago. And uh, she's pushed it up on the curve and straight into my car, which was parked behind it, and uh, probably totaled both of them. Neighbours have told Seven News that 29-year-old was in a traffic control work ute and left a trail of car parts as she drove home. Me and my neighbour Brian walked over to her house and she was laying on the front lawn and they're like, is she breathing? And so Brian said, are you OK? And then she started thrashing. She's then accused of turning on a police officer. When the police came she was very aggressive. We could just hear her hitting the police. They had to end up putting like, I don't know, those cuffs on her. She's Get these cuffs off me. The arrested woman's been charged with drink driving, failing to stop at a crash and assaulting a prescribed emergency services worker. Whatever you do, don't get in a car and drink and drive. I mean, it's got massive consequences, life-ordering consequences. Use an Uber. It's no, not rocket science. Peter Caldicott, 7 News. A southern suburbs grandmother has been held hostage by a stranger in her own home in a horrifying ordeal that lasted more than two hours. Lauren Rose is at Christie's Beach Police Station for us. Lauren, the suspect is now off the street. He is L. Police say the 33-year-old man who was armed with a hammer broke into the woman's Hackham home on Thursday night. It's alleged he took her phone and then stole Christmas presents she'd bought for her grandkids. The victim says the intruder then forced her to drive him to Colonnade Shopping Centre to withdraw cash before dropping her back home. He handed back the phone, then drove away with her car. In a bizarre turn of events, the suspect contacted the victim by phone 24 hours later, and that proved to be his undoing. Police tracked him down and recovered the stolen Commodore sedan from an address at Plimpton Park. Seven News has spoken to the victim's son, who says she remained calm throughout the ordeal. He spent the day installing security cameras at her house. L. OK, thank you, Lauren. A man has been charged with arson only hours after being rescued from a house fire at Theberton. While the 72-year-old was being treated for horrific facial burns, there were fears a second person was trapped inside. Smoke billowed onto Smith Street, Theberton, around midday. The blaze igniting in the bedroom of the housing trust home. A 72-year-old occupant manages to flee. Firefighters lead him through thick smoke and into the hands of police. Injury sustained, heavy burns to face and arm. Patient is now under oxygen in care of an on-site nurse. Care nurse Jen, who was working at a nearby property, heard the commotion and ran to help. Not sure if it was the right time, right place or wrong time, right place. He was taken to the RA, his face covered with a protective mask. Yeah, the poor fellow was coming out as the, the fireys arrived and he was a bit... Yeah, I just would have burned to his face. I think he'll be OK. Neighbours were ordered out onto the street as a precaution as firefighters got to work. One person still unaccounted for. 
Neighbours held fears for a second person believed to be trapped inside the home. Police and firefighters quickly cleared the property, unable to find anyone else. The guys did a really good search and rescue and uh, came up with no additional occupants. This afternoon, police charged the injured occupant with arson. He's expected to face court on Monday. Hayden Nelson, 7 News. Police are hunting an arsonist after a suspicious blaze at Croydon Park. Crews raced to Mercedes Avenue shortly before midnight to find a Kia engulfed in flames. You know, the banging that I heard, the, the dog woke me up. Now I'm thinking that, you know, maybe there might have been someone jumping fences in the backyard. CCTV captured a person running from the car moments after it erupted into a massive fireball. A propane tank was later discovered inside the vehicle. The state government has told Seven News it hasn't ruled out throwing a lifeline to cherry farmers whose orchards have been decimated by recent storms. It comes as central market stallholders beg South Aussies to buy local amid reports of a massive drop in pre-Christmas sales. Proudly showing off the best SA has to offer this Christmas. We have the best sustainable fisheries in the world. We have the best almonds definitely within Australia. In a bid to encourage South Australians to support local. I like to buy um, fresh food. So I think buying local in South Australia is the best way to go. It keeps all the money in South Australia, which is the main, main thing really. All traders rely on Christmas sales to get them through because it does go a bit quiet through the January month. Every dollar that you spend with a local South Australian business helps put food on the table for a family here in South Australia. But despite pressure from the opposition, the government's yet to commit to spending a single dollar on helping out cherry growers hit by last week's storms, saying it's still assessing the damage in local orchards. We can certainly make sure that we're supporting them through being able to stock our Christmas table with some of the fantastic produce that's available here in South Australia. The cost of living is taking a toll on some businesses here at the central market. Sales at McMahon's are 25% down on this time last year. Even the product costs are higher, the sales are lower than last year, so that means inflation does impact the sale. Fortunately, they're still buying, but they're just buying a bit less, and, and that's perfectly understandable. Even more reason to spend what you have on something locally produced. We just watch what we buy, and we don't buy huge. Ashley Kanowski, 7 News. A wild storm struck Brisbane this afternoon, bringing driving rain and large hailstones. A dangerous electrical storm had already swept through last night, leaving at least one man dead. It was as fierce as it was fast. The storm cyclonic as it slammed into Queensland's southeast. Jesus. It's four stronger than Cyclone Jasper. Winds of 169 kilometres an hour toppling trucks. Wow, the wind just over. Flipping planes on the tarmac at Archerfield Airport. That level of wind gust is comparable to a low-end Category 3 tropical cyclone, so severe tropical cyclone, and is also within the range of the second last tornado as well. There was chaos at Brisbane Airport too, dozens of flights unable to land. What about? In the Brisbane suburb of Murraree, tragedy. A good Samaritan killed trying to remove fallen branches. His final moments captured on camera. Police say the 30-year-old was hit by a falling power line and electrocuted. Heartfelt condolences to the family of the man in Murray who died trying to help during the storm last night. The supercell left a trail of destruction. Roofs were ripped off homes in minutes. Wooden beams snapping under Mother Nature's sheer force. Sheets of iron crumpled like scrap paper. You come back this morning and this guy's roof is off and there's trees glass broken and yeah. Buildings shredded to pieces littered across streets and front yards. This office block looked more like a demolition zone. Hallways flooded, trashed with files and parts of what was the building's roof. These corrugated iron sheets and timber beams were ripped off the roof and thrown metres onto power lines, creating a potentially deadly hazard for anyone nearby. The roof's come off of the timber yard and just strewn itself through my yard, so yeah, she 
the car actually moved a metre with these gusts of wind. 35,000 properties were left without power as 150,000 lightning strikes hit. Residents faced with a mammoth clean-up. Jordan Bissell, 7 News. A legal brawl is brewing between a prominent district court judge and top prosecutors. The judge says lawyers are bringing rape cases that are doomed to fail and innocent men are spending months in jail as a result. He's branded the prosecutor's case legally wrong, profoundly unfair, a miscarriage of justice. As far as judicial rebukes go, lawyer Paul McGurr says Justice Newland's serve is right up there. He hasn't missed. They are strong comments. Charged with raping a woman four times, the accused was refused bail for eight months. But when a jury found them not guilty, the judge not only awarded costs, he unleashed on prosecutors. In my judgment, the accused did not commit any crime and should never have been prosecuted. The prosecution is a miscarriage of justice. A lot of people have been too scared to say these things um, because of reprisals. It's no surprise that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has hit back at Justice Newland's comments, even going as far as to make a complaint to the Judicial Commission. The DPP rejects any suggestion that it makes prosecution decisions lazily or on the basis of political expedience or that it operates according to some sort of unwritten policy. But with high profile cases like Brittany Higgins failing to result in a conviction, advocates are warning these latest comments could result in fewer sexual assaults being reported. They carry a lot of social stigma and they often feel not believed. Evan Batten, 7 News. Donald Trump's former personal lawyer and right-hand man, Rudy Giuliani, has been ordered to pay more than $220 million over false election claims. A judge found Mr Giuliani had defamed two poll workers in Georgia when he accused them of tampering with votes in 2020. The absurdity of the number merely underscores the absurdity of the entire proceeding where I've not been allowed to offer one single piece of evidence in defence. The victims, a mother and daughter, said they feared for their lives in the wake of his comments, describing the past few years as devastating. Three Israeli hostages have been mistakenly killed by friendly fire in Gaza when troops confused the young men for Hamas fighters. It comes as the United States increases pressure on Israel to focus on more targeted attacks. Filming the Hamas invasion on October 7, 28-year-old Yotam Hayim says a terrorist infiltration is underway. He was abducted moments later. Seven Spotlight programs spoke with his heartbroken mother. He is telling us that he loves us and if you will not survive this, I love you. one of three hostages shot dead by the very troops fighting for their release. We're looking into how it happened, uh, how it came about that these uh, hostages were out. Israel's military had mistaken the young men for Hamas fighters. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu describing it as an unbearable tragedy. We will dress our wounds, learn the lessons and continue efforts to bring hostages home. Hundreds marching in protest in Tel Aviv, many of them relatives whose loved ones are still missing. What we have told our troops is to be extra vigilant and do one more safety check. The US government is ramping up pressure on Israel to scale back its large ground offensive for a more targeted campaign. One that is focused uh, in more precise ways on targeting the leadership and uh, on intelligence-driven operation. To stop the careless waste of life. In the United States, Jacqueline Robson, 7 News. Federal Treasurer Jim Chalmers says struggling families will be better off this time next year. Economists say it's only a matter of time before falling inflation and the promise of rate cuts in the United States flow through to Australia. Wall Street in a flurry. The US share market surging this week after the Federal Reserve left interest rates on hold for the third month in a row. 
Falling inflation, feeding expectations, the Fed will start cutting borrowing costs next year. Encouraging news for Australian mortgage holders struggling to meet monthly repayments. It's only a matter of time before the Reserve Bank follows in the same direction. The RBA tipped to slash rates three times in 2024 from 4.35% to 3.6%. The tide of higher inflation and higher interest rates is now starting to recede. Making it easier for families and Labor's bid for a second term, helping to flip the political debate in the countdown to the next election and blunt one of the coalition's main lines of attack. What we're seeing more and more is Australian families suffering from cost of living pressures and we're seeing a government with no answers. An argument that's gaining traction now, but the government says won't be by the time voters head to the polls. That's certainly the expectation. The Treasury expects inflation to moderate further. Uh, they expect uh, wages to grow. Taking the pressure off family budgets and a government seeking re-election. There's more to do and there are certainly challenges ahead. But we've got a big agenda for 2024. A Christmas message promising more cost of living presents next year. Rob Scott, 7 News. The Sydney Opera House was brought to life last night in tribute to legendary Australian performer Barry Humphreys. The life and career of the entertainer was celebrated at a state memorial there yesterday. Humphreys' most famous character, Dame Edna, was projected onto the sails later that night. Let's check in with Abba now. What have you got for us in sport, Abba? Well, interesting day of test cricket over in Perth. In fact, perfect to spend all day on the couch watching it. <laughs> but we are back batting. It didn't start well. Dave Warner has gone for a duck after his first innings heroics. And Charlie Woods might only be 14, but already he's out driving his dad, Tiger. Interesting father-son moment, though. 14. 14. Wow, looking forward to that story. Got Thanks, Abba. coach. I'm, I'm sure he does. <laughs> Thanks, Abba. Well, they've been booming as a healthier choice for non-drinkers, but could there be a hidden downside to alcohol-free drinks? That story is coming up next. Also, a high court win for Prince Harry in a phone-hacking bombshell. The Adelaide bus driver who's been spreading festive joy for a decade. And later this hour, the historic corner store transformed into a modern family home at Goodwood. They're freely available on supermarket shelves and widely advertised. But now alcohol-free drinks are under the microscope, with South Australian researchers asking if they're getting kids hooked on the real thing. They look and taste like the real thing. And there are fears zero alcohol beer, wine and spirits could be serving as a booze-free first step for curious young shoppers. I think for a lot of people, um, if they try having non-alcoholic drinks first, they end up liking the taste. Mama Vana and daughter Mia say the widespread marketing and availability of alcohol-free products make them more tempting to taste. I think it should be more targeted to us um, um, adults as an alternative. They're actually classified more like soft drinks at the moment. A new Flinders University study, supported by the Channel 7 Children's Research Foundation, is distilling what effects these products have on young minds and whether tighter regulations are needed in what's become a grey area for policymakers. If these ads um, for zero alcohol beverages are working like alcohol adver advertisements, and if that's how young people are seeing them, then we might want to be thinking about treating them like alcohol advertisements. And with skyrocketing sales of zero alcohol products like this showing no sign of slowing, researchers say now's the time to find out more about their impact. We've even heard stories about school discos making zero alcohol products available. Also gives a message to young people that having alcohol in every type of environment is normal. Keen to ensure these options for those wanting to cut back on booze don't create a new generation of heavy drinkers. Tom Johnson, 7 News. Four men have been rescued after getting into trouble off the WA coast. They ended up in the water when their boat was taken out by a strong swell and then began to sink. They set off two flares and another boatie came to their aid. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Prince Harry has landed a major blow in his privacy battle with the British tabloids. A judge has ruled the Duke was a victim of phone hacking, awarding him more than a quarter of a million dollars in damages. 
A young prince always in the public eye, front page news, tabloid fodder, but just how the British press got their stories, more than a dozen, were the product of phone hacking or the product of other unlawful information gathering. After a seven week trial, seven months of deliberations, a judge ruling Prince Harry was the victim of phone hacking. On a habitual and widespread basis, for over more than a decade. The court finding directors of Mirror Group newspapers turned a blind eye to the practices implicating former editor Piers Morgan. I also want to reiterate, as I've consistently said for many years now, I've never hacked a phone or told anybody else to hack a phone. And nobody has produced any actual evidence to prove that I did. Still, the papers apologised and paid him $260,000 in damages. Harry wants a police probe, having told the court how he he suffered depression, paranoia and relationship breakdowns over the phone hacking. His father, King Charles, warning a crusade against the media was a suicide mission. Harry speaking through his lawyer today. I've been told that slaying dragons will get you burned. But in light of today's victory and the importance of what is doing what is needed for a free and honest press, it is a worthwhile price to pay. The rest of the family lives by the mantra, never complain, never explain, not Harry. In his quest for privacy, he's gone as public as it gets. This, the first time a royal has taken the witness stand in over a century. It's unlikely it'll be the last. Prince Harry's outrage at media intrusion into the private lives of the royal family is only matched by his own ruthless, greedy and hypocritical critical enthusiasm for doing it himself. As for him saying this is a good day for truth, the Duke has been repeatedly exposed in recent years as someone who wouldn't know the truth if it slapped him around his California tanned face. He's suing another two publications for privacy breaches and defamation. The mission continues. In London, Thank Ashley you. Mullaney, Seven News. Well, now meet the Adelaide bus driver who spread Christmas cheer to her passengers by decking out her bus. Each morning, Amy Herman spends 40 minutes hanging up tinsel, lights and even Santa toys. She's been doing it for years and says it simply wouldn't be Christmas without it. The people who don't even celebrate Christmas, they get joy out of it as well. Like it's For me, it's a bit of tinsel and lights but it's so much more than that. There's definitely a lot of love going into it and it's all worth it. And Amy doesn't stop at Christmas though. She even decorates her bus during Easter and Halloween. Good on you, Amy. Well, our recent summer storms forced the cancellation of many Christmas events, but one has been salvaged in the Adelaide Hills. Gertie joins us now from Handoff. Gert, the Christmas markets there are going ahead. They are L just a week later than planned with the threat of heavy rain and thunderstorms last weekend. Organisers made the tough decision to push the markets back a week and I'm sure they're absolutely thrilled that they did because it is a lovely and calm evening here. Perfect weather to soak up the festive atmosphere and shop up a storm too with 70 stalls selling everything from homewares to clothing. Market goers can also sample some of the finest food and wine from the Adelaide Hills and it's on again tomorrow if you are looking for something to do and the good news is the weather's warming up as well those details later this hour, L. Thanks, Gertie. We'll check in again soon. Well, it was a southern suburbs corner store from yesteryear. Now the old building is a modern family home and it could be yours. That's coming up next on Selling SA. Also, a coroner's report sheds new light on what killed friend star Matthew Perry. Disgruntled Hyundai owners consider suing over a paint peeling problem. And the Aussie scientists working to treat MS before symptoms take hold. It was a humble Goodwood corner store that served the community for decades until competition forced its closure in the 80s. Now, the original store owner's family is delighted to see the bricks and mortar given a new lease on life. From a family-run grocer to a family home, a lot has changed since the days of the Humble Corner Store. This was the drop-in centre of, of Goodwood, so everyone knew the corner stop, everyone knew Frank. He was a social worker, he was an entertainer, he was also the, the grocer who sold them groceries. It's a trip down memory lane for Frank Barrett's children, given their own open inspection to see what's become of their old stomping ground. We'd spend a lot of Sundays here at the shop defrosting freezers and, and stacking shelves and doing the annual stock take and yeah, we, uh, we had our keepers, Dad would call it. 
and so it went for 43 years until supermarkets started moving in to the neighbourhood. It's quite a strain running a business when you've got so much competition going on. Especially when you're yeah, not a businessman. Yeah. And he wasn't a good businessman, no. he, he was a people person. Today the home boasts three beds, two baths and a plunge pool out the back. And the hidden cellar is in better nick than ever. Far out, look at that. When Frank closed the shop in 1984, he feared it would be a knockdown. Instead, his children say he'd be chuffed to see the transformation it's taken today. He sold the property two years later for $110,000. On Wednesday, it'll go under the hammer again, this time with a price guide of $1.3 million. Not often do properties like this come up, so it's really exciting to be able to have something like this with such a history in the area. And um, of course, it's created a lot of interest with a lot of the locals that remember it when it used to be a shop front. It's wonderful that they've actually preserved this slice of history and I'm so, so gobsmacked by how beautiful the uh, restoration is. Jasmine Turlings, 7 News. Medical officials have ruled Matthew Perry's death an accident, revealing the Friendstar succumbed to the effect of the drug ketamine. Perry was found lifeless in his jacuzzi almost two months ago. He said himself his life's mission was to make people laugh. There is a little child inside this man. Yes, the doctors say if they remove it, he'll die. And Matthew Perry's loss has been keenly felt across the globe. According to an autopsy report, the actor died from the acute effects of ketamine. He'd reportedly been having ketamine infusion therapy to deal with depression and anxiety. The report lists contributing factors, including drowning, coronary artery disease and the effects of buprenorphine morphine, a drug used to treat opioid addiction. In late October, Perry was found unresponsive in his jacuzzi at his Los Angeles home. No drugs or drug paraphernalia were found nearby. Officials now confirming his body showed no evidence of needle punctures. Known and beloved for playing Chandler Bing in the 90s sitcom Friends. I'm Chandler, I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Perry's life off screen had been a never ending battle with addiction, a topic he didn't shy away from from. Is if somebody comes up to me and says, I can't stop drinking, can you help me? I can say yes and follow up and do it. His friend's co-star Jennifer Aniston recently revealing she'd been texting him the morning of his death, saying he was not in pain, he wasn't struggling, he was happy. His family has now started a foundation in his honour, helping others battle their demons, picking up where he left off. In the United States, Smiley Hogan, 7 News. Terrifying vision has emerged at the moment. A man threw hand grenades onto the floor during a council meeting in Ukraine. 26 people were injured, including the attacker, a councillor whose motives haven't yet been established. The meeting was being live streamed at the time. A four-month-old baby has been found alive after a tornado ripped apart a mobile home in Tennessee. His mother said she thought he died when wild winds picked up the bassinet with the baby still inside, but he was later discovered inside a fallen tree. The roof came off first, the tip of the tornado came down and picked up the bassinet with my baby Lord in it, and he was the first thing to go up. Incredibly, he wasn't hurt. Carmaker Hyundai is facing a customer backlash over a paint peeling problem Aussie drivers claim isn't their fault. That story's coming up next. Also, what doctors have learned about MS that could lead to a vaccine. And later this hour, Neil the Seal, the mischievous marine mammal tormenting a tiny town. Fed-up motorists are considering a class-action lawsuit against Hyundai over damage they say is no fault of their own. The car manufacturer is refusing to fix paint peeling off their cars, leaving them embarrassed and facing big bills. Peeling, flaking, cracking, bubbling, patchwork paint jobs you can see a mile off. It's a crap feeling, it really is. Some of these drivers have been battling for years to get their Hyundais fixed. You're scared to touch it, you're scared to wash it. I drive down the freeway, I can hear it, I can see it flapping in the wind and I see it flying off my car. 
It's ridiculous. Yeah. Some have just been flat out refused repairs even after purchasing extended warranties. Others have had certain panels resprayed, but when the other sections start to peel, they've been told too bad. They said it's it's my fault, it's just reasonable wear and tear, which it clearly isn't. Hyundai says most warranties last three years, but they review each case individually. Repairs will be done for free if it's deemed appropriate. If it's not, it's expensive. It's $10,000 to respray the vehicle. It's probably only worth about 6000 There's nearly 500 drivers across the country with paint issues like this. They're all part of a social media group. Hoping Hyundai comes to the table and fixes their problem, but prepared for the reality, it might take something more. We will be pushing for a class action on this. A consumer lobby group convinced enough to back the drivers in. We want Hyundai to do the right thing and fix these cars free of charge. A spot of paint that could make a lot of lives easier. Rory Campbell, 7 News. Drinking carrot juice could help ward off cancer and even diabetes, according to new research. After conducting daily blood tests on volunteers, scientists in Denmark found freshly squeezed carrot juice helps reduce inflammation and boosts the immune system. They think it's due to bioactive compounds, but stress more clinical trials are still needed. A study into the risks of developing multiple sclerosis could one day lead to a cure. How Aussie scientists are working to beat the debilitating disease. Don't miss that story a little later in 7 News. New details have been revealed about an on-air gaffe which left a British TV presenter red-faced. Mariam Moshiri was forced to apologise after giving the camera the middle finger at the start of the broadcast last week. Live from London, this is BBC News. But a leaked behind the scenes video shows the moments leading up to it where she'd been joking with the crew using her fingers to count down second by second. The gaffe went viral on social media. A tiny Tasmanian town is being tormented by a sea creature whose main passion is mischief. Neil the Seal has gone viral on social media thanks to the locals documenting his exploits every step of the way. Dunalley is home to about 300 residents. Morning, Neil. And one of them, we're reliably informed, is a pain in the neck. He's back on the road, back wanting attention. This is Neil, the southern elephant seal. Wide and weighing in at 600 kilograms, he's hard to miss, particularly if he parks himself at your front door. Someone lives here, mate. The surly sea beast comes ashore several times a year, and locals are always very accommodating. But the fact is, now that he's three years old, he's developed a bit of an attitude problem. Blocking roads, talking back... <laughs> and picking fights. He broke all my signs. In Neil's defence, the signs started it. Get out of here now! <laughs> Sometimes, when Neil gets riled up, the authorities have to intervene. Police versus Neil the Seal. But his antics have amassed him a devoted fan base. 18,000 people follow him on Instagram, and this week he's taken TikTok by storm. This is my son now. Neil, the three-year-old elephant seal. I think we've all adopted him. We just know he's a scallywag, a silly little guy, and he enjoys breaking and entering into lawns that are not his. Love thy neighbour, as the saying goes, even when thy neighbour is an absolute menace. Jacinta Lee, 7 News. Well, I know who I'm following on Instagram once the bulletin's finished. A social the seal. media seal. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> love the attitude. Yep. Yeah, but I'm glad he's in Tassie and not here. Nothing wrong with Tasmania. <laughs> Now tell me, about a day in front of the TV. Absolutely. A great day of test cricket to watch. Uh, we're back in batting and things aren't going that well. Coming up after the break, all the highlights as the first test has ebbed and flowed. Australia back in and the wickets are falling. Things go from bad to worse for the Reds as their winless run continues. And the father, the son and holy smoke, Charlie Woods stripes the Tiger. Welcome back. Nathan Lyon is just one dismissal away from becoming just the eighth man to take 500 test wickets. Australia is in control of the first test against Pakistan, dismissing the tourists for 271 on day three. Lyon's three scalps leaving him just short of joining an elite club as Dave Warner was out for a duck after his first innings ton. From ball one on day three, drama. Oh, sharp single. Oh, Shazad was slow off the mark. With all three stumps to hit, Travis had just missed, not Pat Cummins. Oh, got him. Cleaned him up absolutely. 
The captain ending Night Watchman Shazad shift early. Top Gun Baba Azam shot down for 21 by Mitch Marsh. Nick that. That's it. That is what he does. The ball barely gloved. Alex Carey quick-witted enough to land slow, delighting the bloke nicknamed Bison. Aman al Huck 62 before a rush of blood against the goat. Oh, God, surely. After such a long innings, lost his head, charged. Lyon deceived him with flight. Pace. Oh, beauty from Star. Doing most of the damage, Nathan Lyon offering tips to the quicks. The Spin King's advice paying off. Josh Hazelwood getting big in a hurry on Shaquille. Snared by Dave Warner. Outdone by his fellow opener. Taken on and is it picked up? It is by Kawaja. And Cummins has his second. Wicket 499 for Lyon came via more sharp work by Kerry. Boot on the crease, out. A zoom in required, barely a blade of grass in it. The third umpire favouring the bowler, the 500 club beckoned. But golden boy Travis Head stole the Lion King's moment. For now, Pakistan all out for 271, still trailing by 216. Pretty happy. Um, felt like we could have had him four or five down yesterday. I assume you're batting. Absolutely. Good day to sit in the aircon for us quicks. Straight up. Easy catching. And Warner, can you believe that? After a blistering hundred, goes without scoring. Andrew McKinlay, 7 News. The pressure is building on Adelaide United after it suffered a third straight loss, going down 1-0 to Western Sydney at Combank Stadium last night. The Reds are at risk of dropping out of the top six after their fourth loss in the past five games. Three straight defeats for the first time in almost three years. The Reds are officially in a rut. We go through those periods of losses, then we go on big long runs of, of wins. So um, um, that's something that's not new to the playing group. Um, we want to be an attacking side and take games to the opposition. Carl Viet made four changes to last week's starting 11 in a bid to try and stop United's slide, but the fresh faces had little impact in the opening half. Now Perez! bit too easily in the middle of the park in the first half um, and didn't exploit the spaces that were available for us. Um, we sort of made a few tweaks with that at half time and, and the second half was much better. Iren Kunda was introduced at the break but Adelaide failed to find the back of the net for the second straight game even after the Wanderers were reduced to 10 men. It's back to the drawing board this week ahead of Newcastle at home on Friday night. We we'll look forward to you know playing in front of our home fans and getting the three points for Christmas for our fans. Robbie Cornthwaite, 7 News. As Postacoglu's Tottenham is finding its form again, the second straight win in the Premier League against Nottingham Forest. Diane Kulosevsky set up Richarlison's opener before sealing the 2-0 win himself. Kulosevsky, two, and Matt Turner holds his head because it was his failure to clear effectively that led to the chance. Spurs' underman squad will be stretched even further. Midfielder Eve Basuma banned for four matches after his second red card of the season. Tottenham are fifth on the table, only behind fourth-placed Manchester City on goal difference. LeBron James' first game against teen sensation Victor Webanyama was a painful one for the NBA legend. Oh, as he's reaching yeah. in for the ball, pokes LeBron in the eye. Oh, yeah, he got him in the eye with the thumb. LeBron was poked in the eye not once, not twice, but three times in the Lakers' clash with the Spurs. He still put up 23 points and 14 assists. But couldn't stop San Antonio from snapping their 18-game losing streak, 129 to 115. Boston cemented top spot in the Eastern Conference, thumping Joe Ingles Orlando, 128 to 111. Australia's Jakara Anthony made it a perfect three from three to start the World Cup season. The Olympic gold medalist led from start to finish for the third straight event to take out gold in the single moguls in Alp d'Huez. Anthony is going for gold again in tonight's dual moguls, a new event added to the 2026 Milan game schedule. Yeah, duels is always exciting. It's always pretty gnarly here. I think the finish area might be the wildest part of the run. Anthony has never lost at the French ski resort. Tiger Woods and son Charlie were in sync on the range ahead of the PNC Charlie's Championship Pro-Am. The family the tournament game. has become a yearly tradition for the pair. 
we've fed off of uh, our competitive nature and we've uh, you know really pushed each other to become better and it's just a fun atmosphere. Tiger showed he's still got some tricks for the driver off the deck. Old 14 year old Charlie can now out drive his dad. <laughs> Always an interesting moment Earl. Good to see this cricket is on, of course, straight after the news. Uh, we're two for, so look out. But tomorrow from noon, of course, just get yourself back on the couch. It's going to be interesting tomorrow. Beauty. Thanks, Abba. Well, Australian scientists are pioneering research to better understand links between glandular fever and multiple sclerosis. The project hopes to find better ways to detect, treat and eventually prevent the condition. Mark Alicia's first signs of multiple sclerosis were a tingling sensation in his hand and weakness in his leg. Sort of just showed up completely out of nowhere. It was just, you know, completely confusing and uh, bewildering, really. 33,000 other Australians like him are living with the condition. It's incurable and the causes are still unknown. Scientists are intrigued by the common Epstein-Barr virus that causes glandular fever and its leg Links to MS. So what is it about those people who develop MS that makes their immune system react in such a way? A team of 40 researchers will conduct the study spearheaded by the Garvin Institute and St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. It will involve sophisticated technology, tracking individual white blood cells and what they react to, looking at genes too. So what we want to try and develop here is a risk score that will be able to inform us of higher risk individuals. The project will run for four years. By the end of that time, the risk score will hopefully be rolled out. In 10 years, vaccinations and other preventative treatments could be available. A very big ambition of ours is to reach a point where we can prevent people developing MS in the first place. Viewers can contact the team at the Garvin Institute for more information. Angelique Opie, 7 News. After a pleasant sunny day, things are warming up. Gertie has the weather for you after the break. Tomorrow is looking warm and mostly sunny, but then a cool change is due late on Monday. I'll have your weather details live from the Harndorf Christmas markets. As the day breaks, the news breaks on sunrise. The unfolding fire emergency, breaking news. The Middle East is at flashpoint. Start with what's unfolding. The winds have picked up massively. Start with the team Australia trusts. One of the biggest issues that's facing the country at the moment. Start with sunrise. Time for the weather now. Gertie joins us from Harndorf again. Gert, we'll finish the weekend with some warmth and sunshine. Hey, Mum. Hey, Dad. We will, well, and make the most of it too because a cool change is due late on Monday and we could see a shower or two as well. Now, in the early hours of this morning, there was the odd light drizzle across the hills and the suburbs too. It cleared up and for the most part was a fine but mild day. We hit a top of just 20.6 degrees and right now it is still 20 in the city. Across the state, it was cooler than average across southern parts and there were some isolated light showers across the southern agricultural area. Temperatures were closer to average in the north it reached 33 in Roxby, 23 in Clare. A ridge of high pressures driving the stable conditions this weekend. A trough and low pressure system will call, cause that cool change on Monday. Interstate, partly cloudy and 27 for Sydney. Sunny and 24 for Melbourne. 34 with a storm of chance in Brisbane. Mostly sunny and 30 in Perth. Back home, dry in the far north. Isolated showers and gusty thunderstorms developing west of about Sejuna. Thunderstorms possibly severe in the far west. A very hot 41 for Cooper PD, 39 for Roxby, 35 for Sejuna. Showers are a chance across Lower Eyre Peninsula and Kangaroo Island by late evening. 24 for Port Lincoln, 34 for Port Augusta, 32 for Renmark, 30 for Kadena, 29 for Nuriotpa and Murray Bridge, 23 is the top for Kingscote. And there's a strong wind warning for the far west. In the city down to 12, 27 is the top, a mostly sunny day, variable winds about 10 knots, becoming easterly and reaching 15 knots. Looking ahead, a shower or two on 28 Monday, 21 on Tuesday, sunny and 22 Wednesday, 25 is the top Thursday, 29 on Friday, mostly sunny and 27 on Saturday. So not a bad start for the weekend before Christmas. Christmas Eve forecast will be out tomorrow, L. Fingers crossed that there'll be some warmth and sunshine on the way. 
Fingers crossed indeed. Thank you, Gertie. And that's all the news to now. Thanks for your company. I'll have updates throughout the evening from all of the Adelaide 7 News team for now. It's good night.